got the camera. Welcome back to a new camera. So hopefully things should look a little better right now. Got this in a delayed Christmas birthday thing, Christmas gift. So uh, today we're gonna go through a vlog with a new camera and we're gonna go through a pretty heavy training because today I still have week four since I switched over to having my primary day at the beginning of the week um, in the micro cycle. Actually not at the beginning of the week, it's a Saturday and Sunday I have my primary days. So um, Saturday, Sunday, primary, squat, bench and deadlift and then the rest of the week I have uh, the heaviest secondary days and today that is one of those days. So yesterday I had a rest day and the day before that I had my secondary squat and bench which was high bar pause fives and up a PR at 212.5 kilos and ascending bench sixes where I ended up at a PR of 162.5 for a set of six which was really really good. So for today we have my secondary deadlift day. We have fives and I'm probably gonna do the heaviest set of five I've ever done in a deadlift today. Um, so we have a paused set of five at RPE 7 I believe, something like that. Um, I'm not actually too sure about the RPEs because the RPEs have stayed the same uh, for these days for a little bit over a year by now probably. Um, so I don't really think about them too much as RPEs, I just think them as weak four lifts. Um, so we're gonna aim for around 280 is the goal, um, which is a bit of a, I don't want to say epic number, but it is a bit of an epic number because that was my first real plateau in a deadlift, uh, was at 280 kilos, and um, now we might do a set of five with pauses in that, so uh, that's gonna be cool. Let's, uh, let's see how it goes. I'm also gonna try and vlog a little bit about other stuff than just in the gym. Um, so right now, in terms of the bulk, I am on 4,500 calories. Um, body weight is still going up. We're sitting at around average for last week was around, I think, 98.5, something like that. Um, maybe close closer to 99, somewhere between that. Um, so we've gained around three to four kilos after European Championships, something like that, um, which is pretty good, which is pretty much pretty close to a kilo a month um, in terms of like the averages, which is exactly where I want to be. And yeah, we're continuing to get stronger pretty much every single week and I'm uh, feeling stronger all the time. So uh, yeah, let's go through meal one. All right, guys. So first part of meal one, 5x as usual. Um, I've had this in for like, what, three, four years maybe even? Um, just always eating eggs before training or at the first meal, breakfast, which is always before training. So yeah, um, I also have something else after this, um, which I'll show you after that, but I actually eat this first and then that, not at the same time. Um, so to this, especially on deadlift days, what I usually do is I actually take my electrolyte powder um, with the water just so I can hydrate better and I take that with the breakfast here so I don't have to um, drink as much very close to my training because that is giving me some bloatness in the deadlift. Um, so electrolyte powder, if you don't know, uh, it is just to hydrate you, it's just salt and some other electrolytes like potassium, magnesium, and calcium, stuff like that. Um, in a like hopefully pretty good ratio so it can actually hydrate you unlike some other brands of that um, but <clears throat> you know it's primarily salt so you just mix it in with water it tastes literally like extreme salt water whatever you want called ocean water um, which sucks so what I do is I put in a little bit of like lemon juice with some like zero sugar, basically nothing in it. I don't even know what this is called. Um, whatever this is called in English. Um, but put in some of that, you probably know what it is. You like mix it up with like one to 10 liters of water or something like that. Um, and then it tastes good, something like that. Normally I would actually never do this. I prefer to drink plain water all the time. Um, but 
to get this down, uh, I mix both of those in, and it actually tastes pretty good. It actually tastes fine. Um, it's not too bad with the uh, amount of salt in here. And if you're curious about that, I take in um, 750 milligrams of sodium. So let's get meal one, part one of meal one down. All right, so for part two of this meal, I have 150 grams of this, some like chocolate, caramelized oats, something like that. I'm not even sure exactly what it's called. Some kind of like crisply, granola, muesli, I don't know. Um, and I'll have 50 grams of protein powder with that, but right now I'm out of protein powder, so I'll have to buy that today and then I'll just have to and drink it with some water later on um, to get that in for today. Um, but I'll have 150 grams of that with like 200 milliliters of milk and that's gonna finish up meal one. It has been a while. As you can see, I got the headset here, maybe. Um, I've just been gaming, chilling, answering some clients and stuff. Um, or some of the people that I coach and by the way I have some free spots for that so if you're looking for coaching um, I have available spots right now for that so uh, write me an Instagram DM if you're interested in that but now we're gonna go train um, we're gonna take the pre-workout now so let me just first of all check when the bus is coming so I can know exactly when to take the pre-workout um, because I have a bit of a bus ride and I don't want to drink the pre-workout on the way to the gym um, so I'm gonna do it before going to the gym. So, I actually have a bit of interest in pre-workout. Little bit of an unusual one, kind of like a Rundle Hunt type of pre-workout. Um, I do use some regular pre-workout sometimes, um, and I'm probably gonna do that today. Um, and I've started using that significantly more often. Um, I didn't take it for a long time previously, but now I'm taking it like sometimes, like a couple times a week probably like a regular pre-workout, so I'll probably just do like half a scoop, maybe one scoop, something like that. Not, not a full scoop probably. Um, and I'll show you guys what I have with that. So here we have everything that I use in the pre-workout. So we got creatine, obviously doesn't actually matter when you take that, um, but I'm just taking it with my pre-workout because I train five times a week, so that's five times a week where I can easily take in the creatine. And the other two times, I will just do it every random time. So, creatine, and I'm using the secret dose of creatine. Of course. Electrolyte powder, again, pretty much same as the breakfast. And some regular as pure regard. not even sure exactly which, what this one is. Um, but I'm taking that one since it was cheap and got some caffeine in it and um, yeah, got some of the, the stuff and it is not banned by the IPF, so easy with that. And got some lemon thing and some of this again. Um, purely just for taste. And I'll drink this with warm water. I don't really like it, um, but it digests significantly faster, so I'm doing that. This tastes like a 5 out of 10, something like that. One extra thing is, I've actually started eating a lot, a lot of fruits. Um, so I'm always taking like one apple and one clementine with me to training. Um, so I'm gonna bring that as well.
All right, we're back. So I got a new microphone here, or actually the same microphone, but a new cable for it. So hopefully I can have the good microphone now without any issues with the sound, with the cable cutting out. Um, so this should be much, much better off. So obviously a huge double session right here, huge win. Um, got the 280 for set of five, and it was close to that RP7, probably pretty accurately, I would say. Um, and the back offs were insanely strong, uh, 260 for two sets of six at like, I don't even know, RP5, six maybe, um, which is just ridiculous for me at the moment. Uh, so the bulk is definitely showing the gains at the moment. Um, also, these tempo stiff-legged deadlifts I did just before with 190 kilos here, um, that is, I think, a 40 kilo increase within this one block here, which is obviously pretty pretty good um, for just one block. So that is 10 kilos a week of increase. And the RPE hasn't really changed that much. I really like them because um, unlike an RDL, you don't have to think as much about the brace or the brace doesn't have to be the exact same way because you can let the tension out in the bottom uh, a little bit. Um, so it feels way more natural and feels more like a regular deadlift. Uh, whereas in the RDL, I think the brace feels very, very awkward and unnatural oftentimes because you have to like keep tension on at all times throughout the entire lift. Um, so it's just a hybrid version of a stiff-legged deadlift and an RDL. Um, so basically stiff-legged deadlift where you're keeping tempo on the way down. Um, and it feels really, really good. Got the idea from Nick Manders, one of the best sumo pullers right now in the world. Um, and he's actually extremely strong in that. He does like 250 for sets of 5 um, kilos. He's pretty crazy. Um, and he's like an 83, so yeah. Um, next up here for the accessories, I've started to use like a little bit lower RPE, maybe even a less weight as well. Um, while keeping the form like pretty clean, but just taking a little bit shorter rest periods in between the sets, and it gets me like a pretty crazy pump actually. Um, I had a crazy pump in the lats, in the rear delts, in the biceps, in the triceps for this session, um, and I didn't even push any of them to a super high RPE or super heavy weights at all. Um, so that's pretty cool. I got this new face pull variation. Um, it's basically just a face pull while lying down and with a uh, what is called like a straight bar instead of a rope. Um, but it, it it like gets you a lot of the stability and it actually feels pretty good. Um, now the only issue is oftentimes you're probably gonna max out uh, the the weight. Um, now this is my first time ever using it and I'm already like pretty close to maxing it out as you can see. Um, so I'm probably gonna max it out pretty pretty soon within like one block I would guess. Um, and I would even ha either have to do it like with even slower controlled reps or just really really high reps something like that. Um, but it basically like a line face pull like this and stability and like, like the core and everything with that doesn't become a big issue which is oftentimes a really really big issue for the face pulls. Um, so it feels pretty good like this. Uh, it's still very very similar to a face pull as you can see if just like turn 90 degrees it would be like basically just a horizontal uh, face pull. Um, so pretty much no like real biomechanical difference. Um, there's obviously some in that being it is a straight bar and you're pulling straight down in instead of pulling back and outwards. Um, so there are some differences for sure but they aren't huge. Um, I would definitely still call it a face pull variation. It's not like a completely different movement, completely different exercise. Um, I also believe like Sam Sulik does these, um, but I'm not too sure about that. Um, next up here, I have uh, bicep curls, bicep curls of choice. And I started doing these all the time. Uh, like I don't ever do anything else than these for the biceps. These are by far the best bicep curls I've ever tried in my entire life. Um, like with no comparison at all, um, because I can actually have tension in the bottom of the bicep curl. So I take these two cables here and I stand in front of the cables. Um, so when I'm at the bottom portion of the lift, I still have a lot of tension on the biceps. And uh, coincidentally, while doing this, I've had some of the best bicep pumps I've ever had. One of the definitely, like without doubt, the best stretches of the biceps in the bottom position. And that is really, really showing. Um, and feeling completely different because I've not been doing that 
ever before and um, because with dumbbells or barbells if you're only using that or just regular cable curls you will never ever get a stretch like this in your biceps uh, just straight up that's not going to happen um, just because of like the force of like the line of gravity is pulling straight down and with this it's pulling straight backwards which is actually creating tension in a completely different direction for your biceps which is very very beneficial um, not only in terms of like stretch mediated hypertrophy which has been a, a shown thing for a long time that you can actually gain hypertrophy just from like weighted stretching which is one thing but also because of like the length and partial aspect of it where we are like focusing extra much on the length and position of the biceps which has uh, been shown in many muscle groups to be um, the most beneficial portion of the lift sometimes even out uh, out doing full range of motion to only do the bottom portion um, but I don't know exactly about that it's definitely just something you don't want to miss out on and you actually are missing out on that a lot with regular bicep curls so um, if you want to try out some, some new bicep curls, I would highly suggest you trying these. These like feel pretty amazing and you don't have to go super heavy on them. You can get a crazy pump even without going to like RP10 on these. Um, and you get the ins like craziest stretch I've ever had on my bicep with these. Um, so yeah, pretty, pretty awesome bicep exercise I've started doing here. Um, now for the tricep stuff, um, which is coming very soon, I've started going with pretty regular tricep pushdowns um just a i don't even know what it's called like a nut straight bar camber bar something like that um where it's like curving down and just regular ass tricep pushdowns with that i'm doing 30 to 15 and i'm doing pretty close to full stack by now um which is pretty heavy actually in here um not like insanely heavy it's slightly heavier than normal i guess um but still within the normal range it is the watson rack um and i can do them for three to 15 with like medium clean reps uh pretty fast not like uh tempo control or anything like that but i mean i get a pretty crazy tricep pump anyways from it and if i'm getting a pretty crazy tricep pump it doesn't feel awkward in any of my joints and i can progressive overload it i'm pretty happy uh that pretty much checks all of my boxes for any movement accessory movement um and i can even feel the day after sometimes with these um just because of the sheer load i'm pushing i'm, I'm guessing um so yeah that's pretty cool um probably gonna work towards a full stack but i actually feel a little bit in my core just because i have to stabilize so much weight uh, in this position um that i might go back to some kind of more stabilized tricep push down uh, either the seated one again or uh, maybe a single arm where i don't have to use nearly as much weight or anything like that um, which i'm also doing at, at this moment i'm doing both i'm do both doing this and the single arm so that uh, so that like it's just a different stimulus different movement and with different points in time um but this is actually the day before my close grip bench press heavy day um so a little bit counterintuitive with that i would guess but not the end of the world at all um sometimes bench feels better when you have been working the prime moves a little bit more recently and uh yeah it's a pretty quick physique update uh so the bulk is as you can see going great i haven't really put on much fat to be honest uh, i have definitely put on some but i mean my body fat percentage looks somewhat similar to a as it always does uh i don't really notice any big differences or anything like that um maybe i got a little bit more on my belly and my chests but that's about it pretty much um i can still pull off the vacuum even with a lot of food in me and my rib cage is uneven as hell and uh yeah that is what we're looking like right now at the 99 98.5 ish range uh pretty good for a power lift i would say